Hello. How's everybody doing today? Alright. Is this not working correct? I think it is. Oh, you can hear me. Oh, excellent. Alright, cool. So it is working. Okay. Well, I guess let's get started. I can't see any of the chats here, which is weird. Hmm. Hey, Broke Fang. How's it going, man? wonder if I can... Still just trying to <clears throat> figure out all the streaming software. But yeah, so... Today, I was going to be discussing um, the Jeep and armoring it. So, some of the issues I've been running into and some of the ideas I had. Anyways, it's so weird that it doesn't show anything on here. Huh. Oh well, we'll just keep going I guess. So, <clears throat> One of the main issues that I have with the Jeep is it has a very, very low payload capacity. Um, that is pretty much the maximum weight the vehicle can have inside of the cab with no major issues to like its ability to drive, you know, turn, stop. All that is affected by its max payload. This Jeep uh, Liberty that I selected to armor has only like 1,150 pounds so it's very low for the max payload it can have so one of the things that I'm looking to do is obviously I'm gutting it All right, I can show some videos too because this is an ongoing project so I guess we'll start there so yeah, I'm, I'm going to take out the all the seats, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to swap most of the seats out with plastic seats. I'm also dropping it down to only being a two or three seater rather than five seats. So that whole like rear sofa in the vehicle is getting taken out completely. I might install a third seat. This by itself, obviously, the, the OEM passenger and driver seat weigh right around, I actually have it, it's like, yeah, 50 pounds, thereabouts. And by doing like plastic drum seats, actually we'll start there, they look like this, right? Something like that. They're actually polyethylene, which I thought is, you know, fun. But they weigh about 12 pounds, so, you know, we're looking at pretty much a 38 pound weight difference just by swapping out those initially. I'm also completely removing all the interior, so like all the flooring and roofing and stuff. So it's going to be fully gutted, and that's what I've been doing. And conveniently, every time I get out there to actually work on this thing, it starts pouring rain, <laughs> so I don't get too far into it. But it's mostly gutted now. And I've gotten a lot of measurements on the inner door panels. And essentially we're looking at about 50 uh, square feet, about 51 square feet, not including the glass right inside of this vehicle. And with the weight, you know, like the, re the whole cab, like the rear door and everything, 
Um, with with that size, I need to create some armor that weighs less than ten pounds, essentially, because you know it's like if it's if it's you know fifty square feet that I'm covering for the inner cab without the glass, and if it's at ten pounds per square foot, which my best plates for the vehicle I was I have already tested out was 12 pounds right so you're looking at about 600 pounds in total if I was going to do it all that way and there's certain areas that it wouldn't work as effectively that's why I'm looking at like uh, using hardened steels around where the roll cage is on like the pillars these sort of areas if that makes sense um yeah Luckily, yeah, I'm also removed, like I said, I removed the seats completely out of it, and I'm taking all the metal, essentially the base, I'm taking most of the base apart, and that's what I'm going to be attaching those bucket seats to. Not going to be a very comfortable ride. There's some underbody rust. Honestly, the floor and the, uh, most of the underbody actually looks all pretty clean considering that like it is starting to rust pretty bad on the sides and that's why uh, why I'm like I, I have to get this done soon because you know I'm not gonna have a vehicle for too long you know once the rust starts going I'm also thinking I've been thinking about deleting these windows because they don't really serve a purpose if I remove the sofa in the back these are just these rear like not the hatch they're just these rear w window sections and I think it might be more weight efficient to just remove them and like put like steel like even a steel plate over that area I don't know what do you guys think I haven't checked the chat in a minute whoa hey everybody and getting the center console tripping off them and yeah I'm gonna be ripping out the whole the whole console 1980 Bronco got ballistic panels from the sheriff station we built oh so like the the, the big thick fiberglass ones they put it like inside of the wall that would be a lot of fun. This reverence using micro a microwave to time and launch a missile? No, I have not seen this. I was it's funny that you mentioned Syrians. Uh, I was just getting some uh, vehicle inspiration because I, I love some of these some of these, let's see. <laughs> My man. Look at that vehicle. Mwah. Look at that tr truck. Oof. I love it. <laughs> this one's from Mexico. This was uh, some of the guys that are fighting the um, cartels down there. I love it. Yeah, this is another another <laughs> Syrian vehicle. Mm. Now that I like how how clean the tires look in comparison to the the amount of rust. But you know, if it works. So yeah, one of the things that obviously I, I've had a lot of discussion about, this guy right here is pretty cool on Pinterest. He shares a lot of these different, uh, like, homemade, like the, the yeah, Mexican vigilantes, uh, Syrian, yeah, a bunch of the, like, bizarre armored vehicles that have come out of necessity in different parts of the world. Pretty cool. But obviously I like this idea right here for the grill. The slanted, like, uh, you know, do that in, like, AR-500 steel. I like that a lot. I think we could do something like that. Anyways, I'll pull the chat back up, so. <sighs> Mad Max, you can also gut the windows of the rear cab to save weight on the glass. Yeah. You also create an arm of rear with a control and machine gun on top of the PS2 controller from the inside. <laughs> that would be crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, good point, Pierce. That's one reason why I'm trying to make it more of a gray vehicle rather than, like, the full, like, external armor. You know, because there's a few different ways we could approach it. You know, like I said before, once we gut it, you know, we could go more like the crazy Mad Max armored you know, external armored everything, but the problem with that is, is it's very noticeable. 
and ideally I wanted it to be a vehicle that you wouldn't necessarily be able to tell right by, you know, just by looking at it. But I do like the idea of at least deleting those rear windows, Gopnik. Yeah, I think that it's it's just going to have to happen because I'm starting to just calculate how much. And really, I don't know um, when it comes to the bulletproof glass exactly the weight I'm going to be able to get it at. So, you know, that's, w that's w one of the things that I'm testing in the next few weeks, actually, is I have all this uh, polycarbonate single strength and double strength glass um i've got so much different films so many different uh construction adhesives that are transparent right i have been just collecting just so many <coughs> lexel our old favorite right that's one of them that i did for my acrylic like two years back two three years back this gorilla glue actually worked really well with glass and it's very transparent i just uh, did some drop tests on it. I was very surprised at how well it actually kept the uh, like pieces from just flying everywhere, just from doing like weight drops on them. Um, and it just kept it all together. It's it's kind of uh, when you stack glass up. I've noticed that if you have a kind of a more elastic um, membrane in between the plies, it it really does keep it from like actually cracking because glass has a certain level of flex it can go before it breaks anyways so having some like elasticity between the uh, layers and planes of glass actually allow them to kind of flex in on themselves without breaking minimizing uh, you know distributing energy and stuff so high tech Finn here from your discord nice did you ever see ever look into the just armoring the seat like the old Vietnam Kiwis. I do like that idea. Like yet again, like one of the things that I'm, I'm really trying to focus on is uh, this next video will probably discuss like the different directions we could go with this build. I do like just essentially making something that would be like removable. That's a cool idea. And just yeah, armoring just the people essentially is a cool idea. I'm going to stick with a, like what I, what I initially planned though, it, which is... Um, you know, putting in bulletproof windows and um, fully armoring up the cab and everything. Are you thought something? Windows in half and using hard armor to the lower third of the windows. I kind of feel like I need to do that for the main windshield. One of the issues with the main windshield, you know, that's why most, you see most tactical vehicles have very small windshields for this reason. Right? Is that when you have a giant piece, that's I mean, that's very hard to get, like, armored right. I mean, first off, it's curved, right? It's angled and curved. You know, that's a lot of glass. <laughs> and uh, glass isn't uh, insanely strong when it comes to, like, ballistic threats. So that's why they often make them much smaller. I kind of like the idea of trying to just split the windshield in half, essentially, like, passenger and driver, right? and then just do panels on each side of those. They would still be big, because yet again, I don't want it to be... Yeah, a full build itself. Yeah, it is more versatile, Ace, but I do like that idea. I really do. I kind of would... I almost wanted to do just an offshoot, but I'm like, I need to get this done first. But I definitely will be approaching other types of uh, vehicle armor in the near future. Because there are some really cool ideas that you guys have pitched to me. And it's like, man... I, I like the idea of just basically making a a blanket, of, like a ballistic blanket essentially that you could like staple up or put inside of the door behind the driver's seat and then just make like removable ballistic, you know, glass panels essentially that could be anchored into place in front of you and beside you. And that would probably be the easiest way for most people to armor their vehicle because then you would need very little modification to, you know, the structure itself. And that's a cool idea. You might actually be able to get into the weight allowance a lot easier too. Especially if you keep it to like pistols. You know, one of the big problems I had was I had to open my mouth and aim for the LPS from the 7.62 by 54R. That one's actually fairly difficult with homemade armor. Uh, even though it's a mild steel core penetrator, that old Russian ammo man, 
It's uh, it, in general, uh, I've noticed that um, uh, porcelain has a difficulty against like real like larger projectiles, not just fast moving projectiles, and um, like with the 308, I've noticed that it has a uh, difficulty sometimes really breaking up that bullet, or I should say more or less you it, it disintegrates a lot quicker than like you know legitimate old, like alumina oxide or silica carbide ceramic, like the stuff you hope to get in you know or the the stuff that you actually would get in legitimate armor panels like legitimate ceramics so it, it breaks apart a lot easier so anyways where was i so yeah as it stands right now like i was mentioning before we're looking at right around 51 square foot for the like pretty much the full cab so i really do need a dual strike face like do you plan on well, um, in my last uh, armor video, I made a bunch of panels, and the best ones did use uh, two layers of porcelain, and they were about 12 pounds per square foot, and so that's kind of the issue I'm running in with right now with the max payload capacity, is that I really need something closer to 10 pounds, so that way, like, once the cab is done without any of the glass or engine compartment taking place we're looking at about a 500 pound removing the and changing out the seats like i said is going to give us our weight back some of the weight back you know it's not going to be like crazy i think the i know the seats themselves weigh 50 pounds the front two and like i was saying if we went to uh these ones essentially we're we're you know we're going to be able to get a like a 38 pound difference so that's 76 pounds for both of those just by buying these and putting these in for the passenger and driver so that would be pretty nice and then once obviously we got everything else out i also have a scale now i have access to a scale so that's nice i'm going to be weighing it hopefully tomorrow i just have to pick it up for my work and so i'll be able to give like an accurate you know weight of what it was with everything in it and then once it's gutted so that way we have hopefully we'll get to like two to three passengers with some gear like a weight allowance that's why i'm aiming more for two people because it's going to be a lot easier to just say like you know 350 to 400 pounds for two guys with their equipment probably closer to two what be like see if two guys because usually they calculate it by like an individual weighing 150 pounds which is i don't know i don't know why they do that in america <laughs> like like i'm skinny and i weigh more than 150 pounds you know what i mean it's like i, I don't know so but yeah so we calculate pretty much two guys weighing about, let's say, 200 pounds each, that's 400 pounds, plus maybe 100 pounds of gear, that's 500 pounds. So if we can get around 500 pounds, you know, cover 500 pounds right there, and then 500 pounds for the cab, and you're, you're pretty much there, you know, at the max payload capacity. So, cutting corners and reducing the weight anywhere we can is going to be critical for this build. Or just, or just go crazy and try to, like, we either, we could drop, you know, and that's what my next video is going to be about, is, like, we could drop the threat level down. I don't like doing that, though. But if we made it just, like, 7.60 by 39 and maybe, like, the M193 out of, like, an 18-inch barrel, like, that's the armor, that's much more, like, you know, we, we could easily, oh, hey, Firefly, we could easily drop the weight down on that you know, or get to that point. It's when you get into the steel core stuff moving at really high rates of speed that it's it becomes a lot more problematic. And that's not even hardened stuff, you know, we're not even talking about like hardened steel penetrators or tungsten penetrators which are uh, far, yeah, <laughs> be far worse to encounter. So, anyways. 
But yeah, I think the idea of splitting the front window would be a good one, and then removing those back two. Fiber reinforced comp. Hey, 3R Ballistics! How's it going, bud? Finally get those kids down? <laughs> I'll test fiber reinforced concrete in a few weeks. I can definitely get to a 10 pound per square foot. If you guys don't know uh, 3R Ballistics, He's, he's awesome, man. He's been working, he's been show, showing a lot of uh, interesting uh, builds on my Discord. And him and I were talking for a kind of a collaboration because I really want to get, you know, like I said, if I could get the doors under pretty much essentially 50 pounds because each door panel is about uh, six square feet, roughly. I'm going to try to cover so. Oh, yes, I am. I'm not giving up on the, the 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 LPS. I like the LPS too much. I'm gonna still try to stop it, Gothic. That's what I'm saying. I could drop it. I just wanted to give the like you know like. It's either that or we get more expensive, and like I said, creative with like our build and essentially, and essentially you know like because if we go into Aramid territory, if we actually say you know what we're gonna just forego fiberglass entirely and start diving into like. Uh, Kevlar or Lumat, I know we could hit like a sub 10 pound, but it's just going to go drive up the cost. You know, so it's like we can give people options. We could even blow past <laughs> the uh, the payload capacity and just have that sucker like grinding. <laughs> just low rider, you know, not really going to be going over any bumps, but because even if we like do stuff to the suspension and the axle and whatnot, no matter what, like the amount of modifications, once I really started diving into it, the amount of modifications we would have to do to the vehicle to like pretty much move up the payload capacity, it would actually be cheaper and easier to just buy a new vehicle. You know, like a, a you know, like a truck, essentially. Like if we just started with a better vehicle, there you go. <laughs> now now it's now all of a sudden our dreams are realized because this is a very low really I just can't believe this uh, Jeep has like one thousand one hundred and fifty pounds for its payload capacity it's kind of nuts but yeah uh, so if you don't play. yeah yeah essentially yeah it won't have any like well max towing weight is different than a uh, uh, payload capacity essentially so towing like a towing yeah but I wouldn't be able to tow with it either there are certain like cool like airbag suspensions and stuff that we could also add that would help but yet again you know like I said the turning and its balance and its fuel efficiency a lot of that stuff it, its ability to accelerate its braking that'll all be influenced once we go past that so you know we could do some things to the suspension to keep it from like you know dragon tail and like you said, not towing something. And that's why also dropping it down to just like two to three people. But anyways, what I was going to mention is uh, 3R Ballistics. We might have a collaboration in the near future that's going to be pretty cool. Because he's working on uh, some ceramic and uh, concrete stuff. I didn't realize concrete could be so light. You don't really get a lot of multi-hit capability with concrete. But he's done some really cool stuff on his channel. If you guys have... Uh, you guys should definitely go check that out. Here, well, uh, 3R, I got you over here, my subscribe. Make sure to subscribe to him too, right guys? Yeah, anyways. He did a, a 2.0, essentially, this video right here, of my ceramic tile showdown video. And he used like kiln shelf. What else did you use 3R? You used a few different things. I watched it. It was a really good one. I'm glad you did a uh, glass as a strike face because when it comes to bulletproof glass, it's nice to have a decent amount of glass in front of your polycarbonate. I think he did like a 3 8 or 5 8 But yeah, he's done some really cool uh, concrete mixes that are uh, would be very cost effective. So, And actually, a lot lighter. I never went down concrete because I just... I never thought it would have any real merit. I mean, obviously, cement and concrete does for certain buildings with a lot of so, so structure, but it's often, I always just considered it far too heavy. So it's nice to see, you know, like you can really play with the mixtures and the compositions with different fibers and uh, 
what is it, alumina oxide spheres and all sorts of other things that I just didn't know about until I started uh, researching it and it was thanks to this guy so definitely check out his channel if you could so yeah his channel yeah right there I showed you three arrow ballistics <clears throat> anyways really cool stuff though uh, but yeah, I like, I like this, this style of grill. I think that's what we're going to go with. I think we could do that with, like, some AR-500 steel. What do you guys think? I think we can pull that off. Hmm. I don't know, man. <laughs> the, this, the, <laughs> this Syrian vehicle, this, this is some Kekistani armor level beautiful I mean it's mm. I love the wheel covers just a rusted rusted piece of steel looks like it's hastily welded on one spot does it like maybe a point up here not much not much you're okay see a backpack mod have you made any templates for the armor Oh, you mean like cardboard cutouts and stuff? Well, I one of the things I it was you and Devin that was talking to me about was uh, the idea of using really small, like uh, what tank? The the yeah the mobile dozer the more mobile dozer that thing is. But what was what was the tank that used those little panels that we talked about, Gothic? You guys know what I'm talking about? Or am I crazy? I mean, maybe I just hallucinated it. The palm tree stencil. Right! <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah, right there. This is so beautiful. With all the... Ah, oh, man. You, I see this and I'm like, man, that's engineering. I like the... How do you see through it? Is it just a slit here? Or does that fold up? It looks like it's welded. I don't... Or no, he must pop up right here. Dude. <laughs> Dude, ah, oh. now this right here, this is some old school drip. Look at that. Mm. That's a cool vehicle. I was just looking at the stuff too. I like this too. That's really like um, cubic Batman-ish. <laughs> this just makes me happy. You can see that those are bulletproof glass too. Like how thick that, <laughs> that <laughs> that's a chunky boy. And it's so small. Man. Ah. Oh. But see that but not this horrific and rusted, but the idea of doing like a split tube panel window essentially for I don't know. If we can make it not look that like like I said, like uh inconspicuous, I think I might go with that. I think the big thing is just if the the sides, because even if it's simple like that, just a single split, you know, it doesn't have to be. Because then I I don't have to rely on like such a huge section of polycarbonate that I'd be working with and molding. And that would be huge. It would also make it a lot easier to get other types of uh, glass pane panes to fit in there, right? Rather than having the big curved, uh, yeah. The big curved windshield, essentially. Codex style armor, but composite plates style. Air duct line. A Z like configuring. The grill, you could also loop around an air duct out of it. Yeah, that's true. I kind of like the idea of like if the front grill, like doing like a, a lower scoop. I'd just be afraid that it would catch on on the ground while you're driving it, essentially. But you could just, yeah, angle something up, like you were saying, from underneath, you know, and then you could just, however you did the grill. If you needed more air intake, essentially, to keep it from over, um, yep, EPA, explosive reactive armor, not doing reactive armor. So many people <laughs> mentioned reactive armor, not doing reactive armor. <laughs> Behold, 
You can't kill me. I'll kill myself. Polycarbonate. Polycarbonate and glass or polycarbonate acrylic. Both. I've tested both. So I've done... I, I technically have about three videos on why not better water... Better, why not up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you could... Oh, you meant... Yeah, you, you could. There's no reason why not. I just like that you, it could maybe, like, kind of tuck behind it so it would be less noticeable. Because, yet again, I still kind of have the mentality of making it a gray vehicle rather than a, a vehicle that is obvious. Use rubber pipes. Catch shrimp working. Too. Yeah, that is worth looking into, Gopnik. Thank you. Could you if, is there any articles on that? Or any uh, things you have? I would love to look and see it. You can send me over Discord. But, uh, what he was saying, yeah, how well do you think two, two times window screens with the right amount of plug current by, be against rifle rounds? Well, so, window screens, now it depends on the window. And that's what I'm, I'm realizing. Most windshields, right, the front one, is made out of laminated glass, which is nice. That's in your favor, because it's usually a decent pane of glass that has been laminated into a few. That's why, you know, it's made so it doesn't sh shatter easily. Thanks, Gopnik. Um, that's essentially what my plan was, Ace, was to literally buy, I've already found some junkyards that would have replacement windshields, and I was just going to buy like three of them. But in order to do that, I need to test how much laminated glass it would take with how much polycarbonate behind it would actually just to be able to stop the 7.60 by 39. And it would also be how thick, you know, it would end up. But internally, it wouldn't matter. So I, I think we could do it that way. And that was initially the idea was how I was going to do it. Because then I wouldn't have to, all I'd have to really figure out is how to mold the polycarbonate to the back because they should be able to stack on top of each other and then just seal them together. But like I said, I got all these uh, adhesives and all these different types of glass, polycarbonate, and acrylic out in uh, my garage because I'm doing... So my next video is going to be this, what you guys are looking at here next week. I'm going to finally upload... And we can watch some clips of it, too, if you guys want to see some of the stuff I've already gotten done from gutting it. It's not really that entertaining because it's just ripping out all the interior and a bunch of photos. Because I'm trying to document all of my stuff in photos now. Armor up the EV, no radiator to need air venting. <laughs> Heck yeah. Cell phone screen protectors for a hard outer layer. I'm not sure what you mean. Are you talking about sapphire glass? That's what they usually call it? And no, that stuff is really expensive. Try to... Also, it's the same thing as the laminate one here in the glass. Try... Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. I, I had to read that a few times. Yeah, no, I have a lot of films. Usually it's a PETG, uh, or PETG, yeah, film. It's most, like, shatter-resistant um, glass and security glass. And, yeah, usually that's how they make laminated glass is that they'll use an adhesive film, you know, piece of glass. Usually it's double-strength glass or annealed, you know, double-strength annealed glass. Not tempered glass. I, I also learned, because I've got some sheets of tempered glass, you can't really cut uh, tempered glass. Once it's been tempered, it, like, it has a pretty hard surface tension. And so when you find, when it gives, it, it breaks into, like, really small squares. And that's one of the problems I'm having with the, not the front windshield, but a lot of uh, vehicles, like, um, windows, you know, for safety, they'll make them out of tempered glass. Because tempered glass also has a higher break strength, so it's actually a little bit stronger than annealed glass. It's often made a little bit thicker. Um, so it's harder to scratch it, but once it gives, it catastrophically gives into small little squares. And that's why they call it safety glass, because it's a lot harder to cut yourself on it. And you can imagine why you would want that in a emergency situation, having a window being able to be smashed out, you know, by like a sharp point. And that's the problem is that tempered glass, I don't know if you can see that, I just picked up this new knife. I was really, boys and their toys, right? <laughs> but uh, it's got, a, for no other reason, it has just this small little part on the back. 
get bulk sound screen protectors from overstocked over things. I didn't know that. That'd be fun to just test. Uh, but yeah, I like the idea of on you consider a laminate of PET and fiberglass matrix composite with porcelain strike face for armor it might stop the LPS you're trying to stop. PET. I haven't really used too much PET. Most of the plastics I've used has been a uh, polycarbonate, acrylic, um, high density polyethylene, and other variants of that. However, more recently there was a. Um, oh wait, no, that's polypropylene. Sorry. There was another unique uh, fabric that I was working with on my last shield. It was a uh, Enegra, and it's like a high grade. Uh, it's a variation of polypropylene, essentially, that's uh, woven into a fabric. So, I don't know, I'll, I'll have to look into, uh, I think, Devin. Devin, did you test PET at some point? I thought you found it to be kind of lacking. But it is a, a, a pretty common plastic, so it might be fun to just see if we can get it to impregnate fiberglass like we did with uh, HDPE, you know. And porcelain is always a good go-to for strike faces so yeah I might be willing to try it out sure obsidian I think I've seen some of your other comments more recently what is the best way to build up bulletproof periscopes for an armored vehicle instead of a still kind of like a BMP hmm well I mean you definitely need some form of bulletproof glass on the front of the periscope that would be kind of fun though maybe that was what that uh the Syrian right Huh. I never even thought about using like a periscope. Driving <laughs> like it's a submarine. Oh man, I would love that. <laughs> that would be amazing. I, I mean, honestly, I don't know how... I guess it depends on how far, Christopher, it's sticking out, you know, what you would have to armor. I don't really... I've never made a pair. I can't... I mean, I know what you mean by periscope. I don't know... BMP. I don't. I don't know the vehicle offhand that you're referring to. But uh, how much weight per surface you can afford with your budget? Because you. Yeah, I know, Devin. You want me to go down the eleven or the aluminum. Um, I might. There's certain areas. Hey, you, you drive a tank with a periscope. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm not di dissing it, I'm just thinking of like a vehicle, you know, instead of having like a big windshield, you just like, because you know it's going to be like, my design is not going to be nearly as nice as like a military design. <laughs> I don't know why, it's, I, have, I have other composite backup methods for homemade armor if you're interested. Yeah, definitely. Are you on my Discord? Hop over and maybe hit me up. Check out 2021 November Dan Gilbert, he would... Describes one way bulletproof glass using polycarbon and acrylic. It's all in the adhesive. I could see that and possibly what direction it was shot out of, right? And, um, yeah, I mean, one of the fun ways has definitely been, like, I don't know if you've seen my, my two or three videos, essentially, on uh, bulletproof glass. Um, I'm trying to condense all the ideas I've had in the different, like the three different experiments I've done in the past into one cohesive, like now, like this next one I'm going to be testing essentially like uh, 30 to 40 different panels. That's how much material I have just to test. So when I say I, I got a lot, I just dropped a, a, a chunk of money just getting poly, enough polycarbonate, acrylic, glass, Double strength glass, which is essentially just normal strength, but like twice as thick, <laughs> which is funny. Um, films and a, uh, a lot of adhesives, just so we can, um, you know, factor everything. So I'm, I haven't ever really gotten to a uh, rifle rated glass that was under like two and a half inches. And that's the goal, is to get it down, you know, as thin as possible. So, but yeah, I'll definitely uh, check out that uh, 2021, Daniel, thanks for the uh, suggestion. PET is easy to experiment with the two liter bottles. Yeah, that's true. Old CDs. Oh yeah. 
my favorite place to get um, polycarbonate from, if you like to, if you're state bound, I don't know if they, uh, I don't know if they sell outside of um, the states, but I highly recommend this place because they do this right here, odds and ends. So if you wanted, so that's polypropylene. They have, they'll sell just like, where's the polycarbonate? Yeah, here's just like, well, that's a, a huge amount. They had a polypropylene. Anyways, they'll, yeah, so right, here's 10 pounds, free shipping, $25. So you just get 10 pounds of cutoffs because they custom cut, uh, you know, whatever shape or size you want. This place will do it. And so what they do is they save those cutoffs and oftentimes sell them in these sales. So you just get 10 pounds of different thicknesses of, of polycarbonate. So when you're wanting to do, you know, I used to buy this back in the day when I initially was working on bulletproof glass and stuff and plenty of other projects. If you see like um, when I would stack up for all those ceramic tile showdown, some of that came from that because most of the time it's like a quarter inch or a all the way up to like three eighths and a half inch so like they only sell a few different sizes but I highly recommend if I yet again I don't know if they sell outside of the United States but if you're United States bound um, you can see that the cost on their polycarbonate is some of the best it's like I mean seriously and this is where I'll be ordering all my polycarbonate from. I, I do already, but that's where I'll be. And they do have bulletproof glass here too. But I'm not going to just buy their bulletproof glass. What's the fun in that? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> can't can't buy some other company's armor. Gross. <laughs> but yeah, they use they use a uh, um, polycarbonate that appears in some sort of uh, probably acrylic. Like a thick piece of acrylic, which is a common way of doing it too, because acrylic is really tough, and it, it'll break up a bullet. Uh, if you've seen that video, I've, I've tested it, and it it does work. It does work. Acrylic will break it up, but but yeah, I mean they sell. Actually, oh, that's three inch by three inch rip. I was gonna say maybe I could buy just a, you know, just like a small panel of theirs deconstruct it and tell everyone how to do it. <laughs> maybe I should. It's not too much just to get a... I don't want like a little 3 inch, maybe a 6 inch by 6 inch. 30 bucks? A little 6 inch? Oh, it's level 1 protection. Ah, pfft. UL level 1. Oh look, it can stop a 22. They just send you a hunk of polycarbonate. <laughs> you know? Anyways. Oh, that's interesting about polycarbonate versus, uh, or PET versus, uh, HDPE. World War II planes. Their front was often made of wind stand some stuff, especially small attack bombers. I don't know about the disc. Yeah, that's I mean, you're fine, buddy. I was just saying that it's probably the easiest place to reach me is on my discord to be quite honest I don't know if we're going to like I don't know with discords TOS the future of my uh, having a discord is kind of coming into question because of how they you know their TOS is really making it very clear they don't like anything that is firearm related and even though we're talking about armor you, you know if you're talking about ballistic armor you're going to be talking about, uh, you know, firearms. Ooh. So, I mean, it's just like I've already been looking at a place to back up all my videos that's not on YouTube. So, I could see doing that in the near future. I'm thinking Rumble. Just to, you know, have some other alternative that isn't YouTube. Because YouTube seems like it's uh, also getting to the point where it doesn't, with all their new policies, yeah. How would you bulletproof the tires? Excellent question. I like the good ones, Christopher. Um. <laughs> Sorry. 
just this this guy at work that that annoys me incessantly and like for some reason uh, your name Christopher reminded me of him sorry how would I bulletproof the tires fantastic question so um <laughs> I'm sorry uh, I'm not entirely sure. So one of the things that was brought up to me by this gentleman I was talking about is that you could use uh, run flats, right? And that would probably be the simplest. And there are two different types. Like one of them is essentially like a thick rubber donut on the inside of the tire. So when the tire pops, it'll just keep running. Yeah, run flats. And then the other one is like a thick wall. Both have their disadvantages and advantages. Um, but essentially, you as long as you can get out of Dodge, you know, I was coming up with some ideas of trying to make my own tires, but, you know, that's an easy thing to mess up and just have a tire just fly off. So we might do a little bit of experimentation with modifying my tires. Probably going to do some variation of like a, like a, like a tire cover, you know, something that drops down to cover and protect a portion of the tire that you see in a lot of uh, armored vehicles. I'm surprised that one doesn't have it with its look, its beautiful look. This one doesn't either. But definitely going to probably go the route of uh, run flat, essentially. No air. T-wheels have no air. They're just... They're just I'm proved. I didn't know that. Yeah, you can slowly collect up a bunch of uh, polycarbonate just from I have, uh, what is it, like 40 or 50 mil, or not 40, maybe it's 30, but I have like some sheets of really thin poly, polycarbonate uh, laminate. I say thin, but it's actually a pretty thick film that I've been saving, um, possibly to test its lamination capabilities into fibers. Bone filled tires? I don't know, that would be kind of weird. I don't know if that would work. I mean, I have one full spare. No, I have two full spares and four tires. You know, you're making me want to watch. Yes. I'm just saying we could definitely... Uh, I could definitely do some experiments with six tires. You know, even if we decide to go with ride flats. Why not just take the ones that we have? I mean, then I'd have to purchase a rim too. It might be worth at least taking the two spares and just seeing if we can come up with something, you know? Because one of the things I was thinking about was taking the tire itself and pretty much instead of doing one, you know, where it holds the air inside of the tube, I was thinking about doing like uh, kind of like bubbles, essentially. Uh, inner tubes, small ones, inside of the tire itself, and then filling all the void space with like an elastic rubber, essentially. And then those little cylinders inside of the tire, you know, you could pressurize to keep its form. Yeah, I doubt it would too. I guess it depends on the type of foam. You'd have to have some really high, like a, a foam with really high elasticity, because it would have to be able to recover once, you know, it rolls over into the weight. I just don't know if you could find one. You might be able to. It would have to probably be a pretty dense, uh, pretty dense rubber, rubber foam. So you might be able to find it. I don't know. I'd have to look around. I'd have to dive into it. I haven't really focused on the tires too much. Like I said, my main idea was essentially either to just buy run flats or, um, take two of the tires and just run some experiments that we come up with and maybe foam. I know you could just fill the whole thing with rubber. <laughs> you know how hard of a ride that would be? <laughs> oh man. It would rattle you apart, man. Pretty much do it like a forklift tires. I don't know if any of you have ever driven a forklift, but man, <laughs> it's a rough ride. You hit a yeah, I don't think foam would work. Solid rubber inside of the tire would probably be better. Yeah, but that's going to be... You need something that, you know... You definitely need something that's going to have a lot of give, but then it has to have a recovery. So it has to be pretty elastic. And it also... 
great on the market still, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. So it's unlikely that we're going to reinvent the wheel in that case, at least. But it could be fun just for a temporary look. I don't know. Because, yeah, you got to be honest about how much... Because even if I made it and it functioned, and we went out and shot it, and we're like, see, that's how you make... It's like, well, you didn't really drive it for an extended amount of time. And that's the problem with it, where it's like the armor panels, they're going to hold up over time until, you know, it rusts through or whatever. They're not going to be altered. They're insulated inside of a vehicle door. But... Um, but the tires, you know, that's something you got to change out regularly. Yeah, please post it on Discord. I'll pull it up here in a second. Thanks, Gopnik. Uh, huh. That's a fun one. With straw? I guess that would have, yet again... Uh, so, so I, I don't know that one. Uh, Mage Punk. I'm gonna have to look up that video. I I never I must have messed that episode of Mythbusters. That's kind of neat. So essentially, they filled it like they just filled up the inside of it and then, um, filled it back up with air so that way when it like got struck, it would just keep it from going completely flat. Essentially. Hmm. Hmm. Anyways. Yeah, the tires are definitely going to be... We'll probably have another live stream just about the tires. Like I said, for anybody who's more recently joined, essentially we're just going over the weight allowance of the vehicle, how I'm currently... the directions I'm currently looking to accomplish it, including um, just trying to find a better, lighter material overall. I might have to just up the cost of the build. Use coffee stir. Hmm. But I have a few tires, like I said, we could we could definitely test some some stuff out. So, anyways, but yeah, so essentially one of the big things is trying to get we need on the docket is the vehicles virtually completely would plates over the tire to live the terrain you can drive on. Yeah, absolutely. I guess it depends on how far down it drops. You know, anything past, like, the, the middle of the tire, sure, sure. And, of course, it can rub up against stuff. It's definitely, there's always going to be a, you know, a give and take. And it's also going to be more noticeable that your vehicle's armored, because most vehicles don't have something that covers a good portion of their tire, you know. So, I just think that it would, you know, it could simplify things at least to protect the armor in some places. I mean, we're going to have to go into the wheel the wheel well essentially to armor the inner um, inner door panels anyways but I mean we could save on that if we dropped it down a little bit or you get really crafty with like a, a rubber wheel or a wheel flare that was also armored I don't know they kind of dropped down it'd still make it noticeably like altered but maybe if we made it stylish enough you know like welded steel and then painted it up real pretty like on that rust bucket, <laughs> that would be even more noticeable. Damn it! No matter what, people are gonna know. <laughs> so maybe we'll scrap that idea. Tires limit your the train, but yeah, that would essentially dictate as a DIY run flat. Could you also? I have no idea, bud. I I don't know how well that would hold up. Tires are pretty brutal. Like it's pretty crazy how much engineering goes into them. You know. But, I mean, we are rednecks, so we'll probably just do something silly like that. Obsidian. All right, man, well, if you want to... Well, Miles still between plastic, fiberglass, laminate, what is stopping? Yeah, I mean, lamb, like a lamb... Sent us on Discord and specs. Okay, thanks, man. Like, direct message? Oh, here. Let me check it this way. Um... Anyways, uh, but yeah, I'll take a look at this. Brings protection of the brake lines in the wheel arch be, would be a consideration. Yeah, definitely. 
Unprofessional Gopnik. I, I'm sorry, I read Unprofessional Gopnik as my friend Gopnik, which is right above you, even though his name is something original. That's hilarious. You could add a detachable side skirt that could go over the wheels if needed and make a latch or hinge inside the wheel well. So you're saying essentially have something that that could be engaged to cover the tires like in the event of an emergency that could be interesting you could make a detachable side skirt or you're just saying something that could be like just a temporary cover essentially still an interesting to help protect the tires yeah oh if you go to my um my YouTube channel, I should have it up in the link. If you go to the last video I have, I put it in every description. So I can probably get a Discord link here in a second. Side place for the link. can't remember the channel name, but there's a Russian channel that did a lot of experiments with tire alternatives and testing how well they handled. That would be something, if you could find that broke thing, let me know. I'll, I'll be, I'm going to make a note of that. Because, yeah, I would love to do some tire experiments. Just don't know exact. So, so you just know it's some Russian channel? Of course it's a Russian channel. Yeah, just some, okay. Side plates for the wheels or hang heavy chains instead? Chains? I mean, I think that the run flats exist, though. I mean, they, they, they'll... They'll hold on even after they get shot, you know. So that's how most of the like gray tactical vehicles what they use now is just run flats. I just I've heard I, I've never ha owned a pair, you know, like owned a set of ride ride flats, but the technicians that I've worked with or that I'm working with, you know, they told me that they they can be kind of depending on which style. They can be kind of a rough ride, like they, because essentially it's a, an incredibly thick wall that once it's punctured, it it'll stay upright, right? Essentially, that's what was described to me. And it's like I said, there's two different styles, but that style, because it has such a thick wall, it it's pretty stiff, you know. So even though the so when all the air is out, it it holds its shape for a while after it's punctured. But I'll probably go that route. It seems like the most, uh, you know, the, the one that uh, would be the easiest, but they're also pretty costly, so maybe, maybe not. Maybe we'll, like I said, we'll, we have two tires. We'll try those two. If we find something else that we like, we're going to go that route. If not, we'll just buy right ride flats. So you guys can help me come up with some ideas on that. Concrete tires? Oh god. Did he really just pour concrete into tires? 54. Thanks, broke thing. Just horrific. I hope he did. What's the purpose of the vehicle? My vehicle? Just to. I wanted, you know. When you talk about body armor, it's so much easier to just go to the point of just saying, you know, you know, if you can legally own it, you might as well just buy your own. I do it because I'm curious about what materials actually work, you know, like from a material property perspective. Also because it's hard. Uh, why a bulletproof vehicle? Because it's cool. I mean, there's no other... I have no other... Uh, purpose than to see if I can do it, you know. And I also think, like I said, you can buy armor, but it's really hard to find a place to, like, the general cost is like thirty to fifty thousand dollars to up armor a vehicle, you know. And so, even if you can buy, you know, like right now, if, depending on, if you're not a felon, and in most states, you, um you can you can buy level four plates right so why practice making armor i i think it's fascinating and i want to build a full suit you know but you can't 
necessarily get them on the vehicle. That's the point I was trying to make is, and I think that's why that video has taken off and why so many people are curious about me working on it versus some of the other things is because plenty of these guys, I know plenty of you that are talking to me, we've talked and I've seen your guys' kit and gear, you know, you already have full plates. Well, why are you interested in a vehicle armor? It's really freaking expensive to get a vehicle armored. Very expensive. And it's kind of like the classic, you know, you know, Mad Max, like someone said earlier, you know. You're like, man, I wonder if I could armor that vehicle. Not easy. So, the purpose of the vehicle, though, I guess fundamentally is to be a great vehicle, great tactical. So, something you couldn't necessarily notice by just looking at it to say, yeah, that is an armored vehicle. Right? So... I want it to be as inconspicuous as possible, essentially. And that's also why I'm taking so much uh, uh, time in deciding how to make it as light, like the, the armor as light as possible. Because we could just start throwing, you know, we could just start throwing uh, steel on the outside of it and go this, uh, <laughs> some of these, you know, the Syrian, <laughs> like some of these absolutely beautiful, like, we can go that route. The Kekistani Special, right there. <laughs> oh, boy. Have you guys seen Kekistani Armor? Is, uh, he's also armoring a truck. Or a vehicle. <laughs> I love that kid so much. <laughs> I don't know if you guys... Uh, uh, let's see, uh, YouTube. Just real quick, he's also doing... Um, An armored vehicle. <laughs> oh, right there. Look at that. Mounted a cannon on his rust. I mean, I wouldn't say that's really armored, but he's mentioned that he was going to be armoring it. So, good for you, Keck. I love it. Good for you. <laughs> uh, anyway. So are you gonna vary a team, yeah. Sorry, here I'll catch up on this. Having size screws and stuff would make having size screws or stuff like that would make that impossible. Are you saying that uh Yeah, yeah, that's you're right. It would be very difficult to triumphant to make it look inconspicuous if uh if we added anything that protrude off the outside. You're right. You're right, you're absolutely right. That's why, I've, yet again, run flat is probably the direction I'm going. And all the armor is going to be internal. Big burb, making an EMP proof rig. Oh, is that for a vehicle? EMP proofing a vehicle? That's kind of interesting. Thank you guys for all the suggestions. I do appreciate it. I do try to read every single one of my comments, even if I don't always uh, comment back to you guys. I always try to take it into consideration. Remember who said stuff. Might I don't look at on they for strictly so I've heard that they can can have breaking loads over hmm. like an armored vehicle it's a target. Yeah, true, true, true. So going over major materials you're gonna be doing a dual layer porcelain and backing it with S grade fiberglass. Well that was the initial well, it wasn't actually a S grade fiberglass. Um, off that last vehicle, uh, um, armor panel. The lightest one I had made was uh, 12 pounds, and it used uh, 12 or 18 ounce woven roving uh, dual ceramic, uh, dual porcelain strike base, and that was able to handle the LPS. I think it was a, a mild steel backer. It was very thin. Like I, I'm, I assumed that it wouldn't need it, but it still weighed about 12 pounds. S grade fiberglass would definitely get it down closer to the 10 pound. I just, the, the main idea, because, you know, we're dealing with the LPS and I want to keep at the LPS, that's going to be, um, that's going to definitely need a dual ceramic strike base. It might be beneficial to just start looking at aramids. Just go ahead and go into the, you know, because I've tested plenty of aramids in the past and I know that we could get it like a close to or sub 10 pound per square foot easily by using like a uh, Lumat. But some of the panels might be fiberglass. I mean, we have four, uh, you know, we have four doors and we can, we can try different things. Uh, 
So there is one place, depending on what kind of boron carbide. Um, uh, man, the name, the name, the name. It was off my old server. Someone even bought some and tested it, and it was really, really good. Uh, black beard armor. Hold on. To to uh to the guy that wanted the boron carbide. That's an actual like reasonable cost for armored boron carbide. Black beard armory maybe. Black beard armory. No, that's that's just an is that? Anyways, I'll, if I can find it, maybe no. Hmm. Sorry. That's just popping up stuff for for a range. Hmm. Black beard protect protective products. Damn, I'm good. I remembered it. <laughs> It's amazing the amount, of, the amount of, when it comes to armor, the amount of stuff, and just some random link. I can't believe it didn't put... Here you go, bud. I'm pretty sure, yeah, right there. Ooh, look at that. Hot press silicon carbide for $89. I mean, maybe that's not cheap, cheap, but this is this uh, alumina oxide, $45 for multi-curve alumina ceramic, 98.5% purity, so it's nice high purity. Normal 12 by 10 sapa. Then they have like the deep cut. I don't like the deep cuts, the swimmers, or like the really, I don't like those. I like the more squared ones, personally, with the smaller angles. That's closer to what I would, you know, what I'd make my plates to be. Would be that one. You're looking at uh, $45 for just a strike face. But look at that. You can get hot press boron carbide tiles for under 100 bucks. Mm. You can make some sick level 4 plates with those, boy. Easy. Mm. Anyways, anyways, so that was. You can also buy from like overseas, but you know, buyer beware. I've been interested in checking out some of those. So, Phew. make your own armor. It gets banned nationwide. You'd be yeah. No, you're very true. I mean, would you most likely? bolt on weld or just stuff the armor inside of the vehicle doors uh, another excellent question um, I have a few different uh, designs on how I would actually anchor them inside of it um, probably bolt on but or well I don't know I'll have to get back to you exactly Christopher um, I was a no I, I was thinking of doing like a rail system and kind of like you know, because inside of the doors, once I, if you watch the vehicle, uh, my last vehicle update video, I cut open one of the doors, the passenger door, to just get measurements. And um, the pla I was still going to probably make it so that the armor could be put in and the plastic panel put back on. So I saved the plastic panel. So even though all the metal and stuff, a lot of the framework is out. Um, and kind of like the crush guard. I was going to remove the crush guard pipe. I think I did. So it's, now it's just a shell. So I might weld parts of it in, essentially. That would be the easiest way to say. Probably weld it. You're a current king of home armor content. I appreciate that, brother. I really do. I try. I'm going to keep working at it, too. I've been trying to upload every week, if you haven't noticed, for the last, like, four weeks. So I'm very proud of that. I did my shield. I did that simple armor build for... Uh, like, I think it was Iran put protesters. I did a short last week with a post update, and now we're doing this this week. So, I'm trying to, and like I said, this will be the topic of my next video, along with bulletproof glass. I can also show clips of it. I've already gutted it. I mentioned this before, but what type of 
tile do you did you use for the shield with polyester? Method twelve inches by two. The type of tile did you use with the shield the, for the shield? Are you talking from the um, from that was a dinner plate? I don't know much about denim. Nylon is definitely better. Nylon will always be better. It's stronger. It's, uh, has a better strength to weight when it comes to it. I have a poop ton of nylon because I want to do a video very soon about nylon. Um, yeah, nylon is fantastic. Don't know much about denim though. I couldn't really give you because I've never really tested it because every the few times I've tested it, I've always found like other organic fibers worked better like jute like literally i would recommend people buying jute like when i did my myanmar with love video by the end of it i tested like four or five panels of denim and i tried different denim like i tried from an old jeans and i went out and bought it and made sure it was 100 percent you know right denim and i never i just by the end of it i was like i i could think uh, jute outperformed it and that's just burlap it outperformed it so, take that with what you will. So, I know other people test it, though. I think there was a uh, homemade prepper did a video. Not like Dog and the Dude, you know, because I know he tried it. So, maybe check out that video. Off of, I think it was homemade prepper how-to video. And, uh, yeah, yeah, pretty sure that's the guy's name. But he uses a lot of denim, so maybe you can, you can look that up. Uh, I don't have too many uh, plans to use. Yeah, denim in the near future, maybe a little bit. So the armor would be like a separate tub roll, and a roll cage was in the standard body palace. Yes, there's definitely going to be a roll cage, <laughs> especially when we're getting close to that gross. Uh, the uh, there's definitely going to be. Yeah, essentially the door panels. It will probably we might weld it inside of it. I was just trying to think how to articulate because originally one of the things that uh. Gop, Nick, Devin, and I, and a few other people were discussing was, uh, he was talking about the one tank is that you could do these, like, 8 by 10 or whatever length, you know, essentially, like, cylinder panels inside of it that would be overlapping inside of it that you could remove after they were damaged. So I would build, like, a rail system that could house those different overlapped steel panel, or armored panels, essentially. And I might do that for one of the doors. Because it's a nice way to like have a, a, a an armor system that would easily be uh, easily repaired. So so after a shootout, you know, because that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> well, generally, if, if you get shot at, <laughs> they're gonna shoot at you again later, right? So tile floors have a hardness rating up to four. You have to look at the specs. Yeah. Oh. Well, that's one reason why I go with um. My ongoing theory on why polyester works so incredibly well is um, versus other ceramics is the fact that, um, and I mean store-bought, you know, it doesn't hold a candle to legitimate aluminum oxide, silica carbide, brilliant, boron carbide, those types of ceramics, right? But just store-bought, you go down. If you, if you compare brick, mortar, and porcelain, which I did with my ceramic tile showdown, and I've retested it a few different times, unbelievable that porcelain blows it out of the water like it and it's like well why it's the same weight sometimes it has better what I would consider kind of better mechanical properties not the breaking strength and other stuff but you couldn't necessarily look up all the information for it so I started diving into well how do they manufacture these types of floor tiles and my ongoing theory on why porcelain works so much better than other types of tiles is the fact that it's a uh, kilned at such a high temperature and it has high alumina oxide content and it actually is kilned at the temperatures I think it's like 12 to 15 cones which when you roughly is similar to the lowest cold centering temperatures of alumina oxide so I think that you're kind of getting a poor man alumina oxide when you buy porcelain and that's my theory is that why it's because it, it's definitely centered ceramic um, so Hey, Rich, Richard Johnson, how's it going? Like, those Iron Man suit? 
I'm sorry, I'm catching up with what you guys said. It's really strong verse weight too, if you could come on. Yeah, silk is fantastic. And it's probably from the organic, like, fiber perspective. You know, you have, like, hemp, jute, silk. Silk is probably going to be the top dog. There used to be silk armor, which is kind of crazy to think. And it actually could stop ballistic threats, so. But generally, it is pretty expensive if you can, yeah, like you mentioned, need to get a hold of it for cheap. I also don't know how, like, the longevity of silk when exposed to the elements. That's one of the issues with using organic fibers in general, you know, is that, like, nylon can stand up to some UV degradation pretty, pretty strongly, especially when it's coated so I don't know how well silk does you know because you have to think about like sweating it in and I mean I guess they make fabric or clothes out of it so it seems to hold together so that's hemp also has high tensile strength hemp is really nice yeah I would like to do some experiments with it too best way to make fire retardant clothing dash armor um I guess it depends on um how safe you want to be. <laughs> uh, some of the best material is like, you know, pretty toxic. Yeah. You ever heard of this lovely mineral known as asbestos? <laughs> That's a cheap way of doing it. And there's a reason why that was used in old, you know, fireman outfits. It works. Um, no carbon fiber is used in some of the new ones. Uh, PBO fabrics. Like Xylon, if you can get a hold of it. I wish I could get a hold of Xylon to do ballistic tests. And that's the problem. Is some of the, the There's some really high temperature, high temp fire resistant materials. And um, that, uh, I think it's PBO, like Xylon. Those are some of them that are used in like the top end suits for like stunt men and stuff. I believe... Vectron also has high temperature resistance. I know Aramids do in general, so they're often used in fire retardant, you know, lower, although lower temperature than like a PBO, which is very, very high temperature. If you, if you look at um, uh, uh, a good place that you could study if, if you can't find the exact uh, material would be a, like extruders, large scale extruders that do like high-end aluminum extrusion. I know for a fact that they use certain types of air mid and carbon fibers uh, fabrics. So you can um, you can look into like industrial like materials like that. You can also get uh, aerogel aerogel fabric which is kind of insane. It's very expensive but I guarantee you that would probably be the top top dog. But there is a I'm trying to remember the name of that. I'm going to catch up with the chat in a second. Sorry, guys. I just now, that's going to... Aerogel fabric. Yeah, it's only a little bit. How crazy. That was like over a grand for one roll, and it wasn't even that big. You're like, bro, no, not... I mean, I... Oh, come on. Is this just not? This is a fake place. Google knows. Okay. Anyways, that this this type of aerogel fabric would be would definitely be um one of the directions you could go because they make aerogel yeah super insulating aerogel blankets for like uh um not fire extinguishing but like yeah fire protection essentially really insanely high temperature resistant stuff just in, just through the roof. So, okay, catching up. HDB lined air mid and nylon. That would be a lot of fun. You quit reading my brain, Gatnik. No, that is a good idea. I do like, especially high density polyethylene laminates to those materials so well, and it's really easy. Would you like to make a dedicated help video to protect Ukraine civilians too? I know you covered everything, but maybe you could just do some of the trans, and we could get some of the translate materials. There into the UA. Um, generally speaking, um, well, I thought that they, I thought that they had most of their armor covered. I know an armor company that was 
uh, Armex or whatever. I don't know. I don't know if the civilians. I've never really had. I usually make videos when people reach out to me. That's how I make videos, right? So I did Myanmar with love because people from Burma, Myanmar, reached out. Um, I did this recent one for Iran because a guy from Iran reached out, right? And I still have some other footage that I'm gonna do for that. I haven't. I don't. I've never. I, I can't think of a time that someone from Ukraine has even reached out or someone trying to help. So, I'm just saying that generally that's why I make a video is when I'm talking with them because I need to know what materials they can get a hold of, what materials they can't get a hold of, what are the threat, you know what I mean? Like, when I'm talking to the Myanmar guys, it was like, like, what do you have access to? Like, what, what did he sub, you know, it's like, because then I can try to duplicate it for you. Right, I can make small test panels, I can go out and shoot them, I can say this didn't work, this worked. And just kind of get the ball rolling for you. So, also no laws on building, yeah, no no laws so far on building hillbilly armor, but we'll see. Yeah, car racing suits and head coverings are fireproof, probably, hot, liquid, yeah, they definitely are. L3 providence out of 10 of most terrorism. Um, When you love a woman, you talk. She's real. Titanium bright and asbestos backer. The true combo. No, Devin. <laughs> Basically, I'm trying to get as close to a mobile tank. Yeah, that'd be fun. I get that. I like titanium. It's so expensive, though. You're missing something. Like, all right. Try anti gravity. Of course. You gotta. What does this do, randomly? Precursor of carbon fiber fabrics. But. Been a pretty woman, to be honest, yeah? I believe in you. So. Anyways, guys. Alright, well, that's been about an hour and a half. Does anybody else have any questions? Or. You know, like I said, next Sunday you guys will get an update video. I think I'm probably going to go ahead and head off here, though. I appreciate all of you guys showing up tonight. So, just for Mr. Johnson singing a song for us. Serenading us as we leave. Well, thank you guys so much. Um, I'm going to go and close it down now, then. Got to get back out to the little ones. I hear them outside being rambunctious without me. I'm going to try to finish getting out the vehicle so I can actually get that video up for you guys. Live cemented verse pouches that hold CO2. I like that idea. But reactive armor. Not reactive armor. Yeah, you, you have a good evening too, brother. Looking forward. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. We'll we'll try to do one of these once a month where we'll we'll do a live stream. You know what I mean? So we'll probably do a, a live stream once a month. I think. Now that I'm actually getting to uh, producing. Thank you, man. It was a great stream. Thank you guys. But uh, yeah. Anyways, should have said it was legal to purchase in most provinces with with P. Sorry. Oh. Yeah, what's up? One last thing. Oh, without. Really? That sucks, man. Uh, you always be the guy. This guy. <laughs> Alright, Richard. Yeah, you have a good day, Brooklyn. Alright, boys. I'll see you very soon. Take care.